Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly what I tell my writers when I get a new writer onto my writing team. This is actually the video that I give to them to sort of train them or onboard them into how I want articles to be written from my writers. So it'll be a screencast going over the introduction, the body of the piece, the conclusion, how to cite sources, and how to conduct research. So it's a pretty thorough overview of what you would want to tell a writer when you bring a writer onto your team. Now there are other things that you can do when writing blog posts, some more advanced strategies that I talk about in previous videos and I will be talking about in future videos on this channel. Uh, but this is just a general introduction that you can give to a writer when you bring them onto the team uh, to get them started on writing blog posts in a way that you would want them to write them. So um, feel free to use this video and give it to people who are going to be writing for you to give them a bit of a guide on, you know, can you just tell them, can you use Chris's method of writing blog posts, not a problem. There's also a checklist, uh, it'll be in the link below where I link you to the actual blog post, there's a checklist at the top and you can give that to writers as well to make sure they tick off all nine key points in the checklist. So without further ado, uh, let's go to the onboarding video and I'll walk you through how I teach my writers what they, I want from blog posts. Okay, so this is the onboarding video for new writers. Uh, so I'm just going to walk you through a sample article. So the sample article here is the seven types of beer. So I will send you a, a keyword, probably types of beer. Um, sometimes I'll send you the whole title, but usually it'll just be a, uh, a keyword. So the keyword here being types of beer, and then you can come up with a title yourself. Usually I like it a number at the front and then the keyword. So seven types of beer, for example. So seven types of beer explained, something like that is fine. And then we move on to the introduction. So the introduction, I usually like it to be th maybe three uh, paragraphs long. Uh, the first paragraph in the introduction, and in fact, the very first sentence of the introduction is the most important to me in the whole article. I'd like you to answer the question immediately. Uh, in the first sentence, second sentence maybe, but as, as soon as possible, answer the question. So for this keyword, obviously for types of beer, you would need to be able to say that there are how many types of beer and what they are. So there are seven types of beer, these are, and then there's a list of those types of beer. Uh, I've put that in bold. Please bold the answer once you've written it. So whenever you send me a piece, it'll usually have the first or second sentence or both the first and second sentence in bold with the answer provided for the keyword. That's really important. And then follow that up with additional information that you can include in the introduction. I like introductions to be full of information uh, so things like uh, for these types of beer, there's a, a measure of beer bitterness called IBUs, International Bitterness Units. Uh, that's a factor, a, a, a factoid that you can include in the introduction. Uh, other facts that you might want to include might be sort of statistics, um, those sorts of details. So I don't want the introduction to be full of fluffy wording that doesn't actually provide any detail. Hit the reader immediately with really uh, useful details, facts, statistics, that sort of thing uh, to provide value straight away for uh, the readers of these articles. Uh, so here's a bad introduction example. Uh, so I'll just read that out. You may be wondering how many types of beer there are, question mark. Well, we have the answer for you right here. You wouldn't believe that there are nine types of beer. In this article, we were going to tell you all about them. Keep reading to find out more. This sort of verbose language that doesn't actually provide any answers whatsoever. It hasn't said these are the types of beer. This is what they're called. Here are some facts. You can see here above it in the actual piece that I wrote, there's a lot of percentages and things. All of this, you know, if, if I got this sent to me from a writer, I would send it back and say, look, you haven't actually provided value in all of these words. You're just trying to put words on the page, but you actually haven't provided value for the reader. So it's really important in the introduction specifically, every sentence needs to provide value rather than just fluffy things about keep reading, you wouldn't believe that sort of thing. Just give me facts. I, I just want clear, straightforward explanations of the information. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we'll move on to the body of the piece. So underneath the introduction will be maybe three paragraphs long. The first heading should be an H2 heading that has the keyword in it. So the keyword for this article, types of beer, I've written seven types of beer for my H2 heading. And then follow that up with usually either start a paragraph, start talking about it, or you can also have subheadings underneath the first heading. So you can do H2 headings underneath. 
I have lots of headings, so I'll just quickly scroll down. You can see I have a heading once every about 150 to 200 words. Lots and lots of subheadings, really good for readers. Uh, I like to break up the text as much as possible. Okay, so I'll go back up to the start of the body bit here. So the first one, I'm talking about IPA. Again, lots of facts, talking about the century in which it was invented, the strength of it with percentages, as much detail as possible, no sort of fluffy language that doesn't say anything. Uh, try to keep your paragraphs short. One, two, or three sentence paragraphs are, are best. Going over three sentence, uh, um, you know, obviously try to write naturally. Sometimes maybe you'll end up with a four or five sentence paragraph, but aim to keep them around about two sentences, maybe three maximum. Remembering that most people these days are reading articles on their mobile phones, and a two sentence paragraph on a mobile phone almost fills up the whole space of the mobile phone. And we don't want big walls of text, so two sentence paragraphs are great. One sentence is fine, three sentences is fine. Just keep it around that. Okay. Uh, new subheadings every 150 to 250 words, but as I said, keep it natural. I, I want you to write as naturally as possible and just start new paragraphs once you've answered the question. Uh, so, sorry, start new subtopics when, once you have answered the question in the subheading that you've already covered. Uh, so linking to sources, I would like you to please link to other sources on the internet. Uh, your sources should be to an authority website on the topic but should not be competing for the same keywords. So for example, this article is about beer, so you'd wanna be linking to other websites uh, that talk about beer. So the website this one links to is anchorbrewing.com, so it's a brewery that we're linking to here, which is great. But try not to link to Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia doesn't really have any topical or niche authority on beer, so try to, try to link to someone who actually has some authority about beer, a beer website or an alcohol website in this example. So when I said don't link to competitors, for example, for this topic, we're talking about types of beer. If we looked at the front page of Google, there's obviously 10 articles on the front page of Google. I don't want any of those 10 articles to be linked to. If we link to those articles that talk about types of beer, then we won't rank over them because we're essentially telling Google we're deferring our authority to those other articles. So please don't link to other articles that are already ranking for the topic that we want to rank for. Okay, let's move on. So you can see subheadings here. You can see some bullet points there. Bullet points are great. They break up the walls of text for the reader. So feel free to use bullet points whenever you feel as if they sort of fit uh, into the writing. You can see here another link. I want f at least three links to external sources per article, please. So there's a third one there. So I've got my three links to external sources. You can see I've got some more bullet points here. Okay, I've just left a quick note here. If you feel like you can't write about the topic or you're unsure about anything, please do email me. I'd rather you email me and say, Chris, I don't understand this topic. I feel as if I can't write about it. Or maybe even, Chris, I think you've actually already given me this keyword, which has happened before. Let me know uh, because chances are I'll look at it and I'll agree with you and go, actually, you know, this isn't a very good topic to write about. Let's move on to another keyword. I'd rather that happen than you give me an article that is unusable. Um, so, you know, keep in regular contact with me. I'm happy to answer any emails, questions you have. My writers are my first priority for people who, you know, if I get an email from you, uh, you're my first priority to answer uh, any questions you have. Okay. This article is a listicle, so obviously seven types of beer. The subheading is going to be one subheading for each type of beer and explaining each type of beer. But for a lot of my articles, they're not listicles. They're just answering a question. If they're just answering questions, the subheadings can be anything related to the topic. When you go to search for the topic on Google, you'll see an FAQ snippet box. So I'll go to Google. I'll type in types of beer here. You can see these people also ask questions. These are good ones for subheadings that you can write about. Uh, and also, yeah, all these other ask questions at the bottom down here. They're all topics that you can feel free to write about. Uh, and also look at what the other people are talking about. So the top one person ranking for me is beerstore.ca. That's because I'm in Canada. Take a look at what they're talking about. Take a look at what time.com is talking about. Uh, this web Stronte store, all of these people, see what they're talking about, try to cover the same general topics as them. Google's already ranking these people for these topics, so Google's going to expect, if it wants to rank someone over them, that that same person, that person is going to talk about that topic and do a better job of talking about that topic. So make sure you have a look at what's already ranking 
and try to match it or even do better if possible. Okay, I assume that you already know how to conduct research. I mean, hopefully you're bringing that skill to this job. Uh, so I, I shouldn't be able to have to show you how to conduct research, um, but yeah. Okay, and then for the conclusion, just a short conclusion is fine. Keep to, you know, 100 words, 150 words, however long uh, makes sense to you. So you can see this one's two paragraphs. You can see that this, this second paragraph, you know how I said earlier that I prefer paragraphs to be about two or three sentences long. This one's looking quite long. Obviously, I'm not going to send the work back to you if there's one or two long ones like this. In fact, I think it's only three sentences. They're just long sentences. So, you know, it's okay to, every now and then to mix it up and have longer ones, but just as a general rule, try to keep them pretty short. Last thing on, is, of course, on plagiarism. Look, if, if any writer of mine ever sends me work that has been plagiarized, copied either the text, like copying and pasting of text, or copying the style and structure of other people's work. So if I see the content and the subheadings are all exactly the same as someone else's subheadings on Google, uh, and it looks too much like you've just copied that person, you know, I, I have to end my relationship immediately with that writer because you're putting me at risk by copying other people's work. Uh, that could, you know, end up with a DCMA takedown of my website. So I don't tolerate any plagiarism and I do check every single piece that comes to me. I'll check on Grammarly to make sure that it hasn't been plagiarized. I mean, I trust that you probably aren't going to do it. No one's ever plagiarized on me before, but I have to say that uh, if, if, you, if, if any writer ever plagiarizes, you know, that's the end of our relationship. So uh, hopefully that provides you with a quick explanation of what I expect. Um, every single one of my writers is a little bit different, has a little bit of a different style, and I'm happy to sort of try out a couple of different articles. I've got web websites in a bunch of different niches. So we'll come, we'll come to a natural sort of place where, you know, I'll find out that you're best at a certain type of article or a certain niche, and we can go from there. So hopefully this is just a good general overview to get you started. There's a writer's checklist here. I'll just open it up for you. So there are, you know, nine points on this writer's checklist. I'm not expecting you to, to tick it off and send it to me every single time. It's just something for you in case you feel like you need it for the first couple of times that you write an article for me, um, that you can look at it and ch check them off. That second one, including LSI phrases. Uh, I'm probably not, I only include LSI phrases for really, really difficult, hard to rank for keywords. So if I haven't sent you a list of phrases and said, you have to include these phrases in the article, don't worry about point two. Um, so only worry about this if I actually say, look, here are a list of phrases. I need you to talk about these lists of phrases. Otherwise you can ignore that. But the other ones, please, every single time, they're all things that I've just talked to you about. So checking to make sure you've covered what other people are ranking on Google, uh, make sure you've covered topics that they've covered, create a catchy title, a number at the start followed by the keywords, usually good. Answer the question in the first paragraph and bold the answer. That's really, really important. Include the keyword in the first H2 heading. Use headings and subheadings regularly. Keep paragraphs to three sentences or less. Include three relevant links to other articles on the web, but not competing articles. Check the FAQs to see if there are other subtopics that you need to cover. That's basically it. Once you've had a go at that, send me your piece. You know, for the first couple, we might have to go back and forth with some edits, but before long, I'll be sending you packs of 10, 15 articles at once and letting you just um, go for it and write them. And then you send me those 15 articles and then I'll send you 15 more keywords and you'll end up just having as many keywords as you, you want. Like you can work at your own pace. All right. Thanks so much for sticking with that. And uh, I look forward to working with you.